Welcome to the notes for chapter H7-5, day number two. So yesterday we defined what a radian was, and today we are going to look at comparing degrees and radians and making sure that we're able to draw some of the angles the appropriate way. What you're seeing here on this first slide is just a list of things that we need to make sure that we know about the unit circle when we are talking about both degrees and radians. So some of the things I'm going to ask you to be able to do here is, you know, when you're talking about the unit circle, we need to make sure that we remember the unit circle is 360 degrees or exactly 2 pi radians. Okay, we, we approximated it yesterday saying it was 6.28 radii that extended around the circle. Now, some of the angles that you'll probably want to have memorized here in terms of converting from one to the other is, Probably most importantly, 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. But from that, you can usually end up with some of these other um, angle measures, like half of 180 degrees is 90 degrees, so that would be a half of a pi. We have 60 degrees, right, is one third of 180 degrees, so therefore that would be one third of pi or pi over three. Uh, 45 degrees is one fourth of 180 degrees, so that would be like pi divided by four. And then uh, 30 degrees is one sixth of 180 degrees, so that'd be like one sixth of pi. So those are the most important ones there, but you can get any of those if you just remember that 180 degrees is equal to pi. Now we've got a few uh, things here, like some terminology that we've been using that I want to make sure that we emphasize here. So first of all here, we've been talking about the initial side of an angle. And remember, the initial side of an angle, when we're drawing it in on a unit circle, right? we usually always start over here on the right side. Because we say over here, this is where we are at zero degrees or zero radians. So we always start out by measuring our angles from over here. So this is our initial side. And actually, let me zoom in a little bit on this so that you can kind of follow along there. Okay, now, so this is our initial side, and then we also have another side of our angle, and that's the one here that we call the terminal side. Okay, remember terminal would be like the end. So when we look here, um, let's just draw in, let's say I had an angle that opened up here, and let's say it was about 135 degrees, right? So this side here is what we would consider to be the terminal side. Okay, so that's important to know. So our side on the right here, this is our initial side, and then our terminal side is over here. So if I was looking at a positive angle in this case, a positive angle would open up this direction. It would go counterclockwise. So you'll see down here in our list here, we've got positive angles here, okay? Go counterclockwise. That would be like I drew in that little arc there. And then we would have negative angles, right? Negative angles go clockwise. So we could have a, a negative angle here that would kind of go the same way if it went around like this. So I said here that I tried to approximate this one would be about 135 degrees. Okay, that's the angle that I have there, which means if I was looking at the negative angle that ended up in the second quadrant here, having the same terminal side, that would be about negative 225 degrees, right? Together, they make up 360 degrees. We've just gone a little bit farther uh, in the negative direction to get around to that same point there. Now, these two angles that share a terminal side are what we call coterminal angles. So two angles that share a common terminal side are coterminal angles. So in this case here, our 135 degrees and negative 225 degrees, those two angles are coterminal angles there. So that's an important term there to know, just making sure we understand the vocab behind everything that we're doing. 
Okay, so our coterminal angles there. Those ones would also be corresponding angles, right? Because they would have the same sine value or cosine value up here. They end up at the same point. All right, let's move on here. And let's look here at just sketching some angles with some different measurements. So just quick, you know, recap of what we know about our angles here. We know uh, on this side of our circle here, right, this was like zero degrees, or we could say zero radians. Actually, I'll do radians here in a second. Let's just go ahead and do our degrees around there to make sure we remember those. At the top here, we know that this is going to be 90 degrees. On the left side, we have 180 degrees. At the bottom, 270 degrees. And then we get all the way back to the start, that's 360 degrees, so one full rotation around the circle. If we're talking about radians here, right, this is also zero radians. We don't really have a like unit or a marker to determine that it's radians, so I won't put the little degree marker on these ones. At the top here, we know that this is going to be pi over 2 radians. Over here at 180 degrees, we know that this is pi radians. At the bottom, this is the same as 3 pi over 2. And then when we get to the very end there, remember one full rotation around the circle there is considered to be 2 pi radians. All right, so we're going to just kind of sketch in some angles here and then talk about what the reference angles are. So the directions here state, sketch and give the quadrant for each angle. It says, what is the reference angle? So number one, we're given 320 degrees. So if I take that 320 degrees, I know that I am going most of the way around the circle, right? As I go around here, I'm going to pass 90 degrees. I'm going to pass 180 degrees, and I'm going to pass 270 degrees. So I'm going to come all the way around. I'm going to be just a little short of going 360 degrees. So it looks like here we are going to be in quadrant number four, right? So we've kind of drawn in our angle there. So we know this is quadrant four. And then when we think about here, what is the reference angle for this? Our reference angle is going to be that leftover part, right? Remember, reference angle is the angle that's formed by the terminal side and the x-axis. So if we were trying to get all the rest of the way up to 360, right, here, that means we'd have to go another 40 degrees. So our reference angle is 40 degrees on that first one. Looking at the second one here. We've got a 200 degree angle. So we start out with our initial side here. And this one's going to go a little bit more than halfway. So we're going to probably have our terminal side end up being over here. Just, we're just going to estimate it there. So we're going to go from here all the way around to there. We're showing that it's a positive 200 degree angle. Now that means we're going to be ending in quadrant 3. And then we're asked to find the reference angle. The reference angle on this one, right, would be that this angle here. So how far past 180 did we go to get to 200? That should be 20 degrees. All right, negative 600 degrees. Okay, remember, when we have a negative angle, that means we're going to be going clockwise around our circle, right? So we still have the same initial side here. And now let's think about it here. If I were to travel all the way around the circle, Right. If I was to travel all the way around the circle, let's just pretend we're going around here, right? And once we get all the way to the end here, we're at 360 degrees. Well, we're going to be going past 360 degrees then. So when we do, when we go past 360 degrees, we're going to be looking at what would the next measurements be. So as I start here, I go around, just like I was showing you there, we've gone around 360 degrees. Now when we get... 90 past that, right? That's like saying 450 degrees. And then we get halfway around the circle again. That's another 90. So we're at 540 degrees. And if we kept going, we'd end up here at 630 degrees. We don't want to go that far. And I'm sorry, these are negative angles, right? So it looks like we're going to be about 30 short of 630 degrees. So we'll probably be somewhere up here is where our terminal side is going to be. So we'll just draw that in there, and then we'll just take this the rest of the way. 
So that is our negative 600 degree angle. Looks like we end up in quadrant number two. And then our reference angle, right, is still going to be this angle that it forms with the x-axis. So it looks like, you know, if we're going all the way up here to negative 600, this distance between here is going to be 60 degrees. So our reference angle is 60 degrees. All right, uh, we've got one more here in degrees, and then we'll move into looking at some with radians. Uh, 145 degrees there. This one, we should be less than 180 degrees, but more than 90. So looks like we're probably just a little over halfway through quadrant number two. So this one should open up like this. So we've got quadrant two. And then our reference angle for this one. Looks like, you know, if we're going from 145 down here to 180 degrees, our difference there is 35 degrees, so our reference angle is 35. Looking at five, so this is the first time I've probably asked you to do something like this with, a, uh, with an angle that is in radians. So we have three pi over four. So what we have to remember here is, right, if we had zero radians here, and this is pi radians, when we look at this fraction that we've got here, this is a proper fraction, so we have less than one whole pi. So if we take the top part of our you know, unit circle here, or the, you know, our angles, right, we know that is pi, so we want to break that into fourths, right? So if we think about it, I could take this side here, and I could break this into fourths. There's, you know, one, two three and four, so you can see I have like four equal parts there. So as we take this here and we rotate this angle around, right, maybe we'll do these ones in blue. So we'll start out with our initial side. This is gonna open up and it's gonna go, you know, that's one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. So this line here would be our terminal side or that ray there. Okay, so we end up here, it looks like in quadrant two, and our reference angle now works just the same way with radians, right? So if we're at three pi over four right here, and this is four pi over four, right? That's the same thing as pi. That means that our reference angle here is gonna have to end up being pi over four. All right, number six, we've got negative five pi six. So again, when we think about this, so if we have zero here and I go and I go in the negative direction, this would be a negative pi over here. So because this is a proper fraction, that means we haven't quite made it all the way there. We're going to break this into sixths. So if we take this and we break this into sixths, we've got, you know, we break it in half there, and then we probably need, you know, three parts over here and three parts over here. So as we count around from our initial side, right, we've gone 1 sixth, 2 sixth, 3 sixth, 4 sixth, 5 sixth. So this would be our terminal side right over here. So that is our angle, negative 5 pi sixth. Looks like we end up there in quadrant number 3. And then our reference angle here is going to be just this leftover piece. Well. If we've gone five six to get to there, that means that we've got just one sixth of pi or pi over six left to get to the x-axis. All right, hopefully you're hanging in there. Um, let's look at the last two. Okay, so this next one here, we've got just five pi. So as we start out here, we know here that this is zero, and if we were to travel, you know, halfway around the circle here we would end up over at pi, but then if we continued on all the rest of the way around the circle, we'd be at now two pi over here. And then if we continued on again here, it looks like our even pi's are gonna be on the right side and our odd pi's are gonna be on the left side. So let's look at it here as we start out. We're gonna say here, we're going in the positive direction, so I'm going to start in close to the middle. I'm going to say there's pi, there's 2 pi, there's 3 pi, 
there's 4 pi, and then there's 5 pi. So we end up all the way over here. So with this one, because I drew that in, in in blue, let's go ahead here. I'm going to add in my, this is my initial side here. So it's like a straight angle when you see it on a circle here. And then this is our terminal side. Now, when we're asked what quadrant we're in, we're not in a quadrant. We're actually on the x-axis. And for reference angle, we're not going to say, you know, some people say it's like zero, but I'm going to say just we're not going to have a reference angle for this because it's on the axis there. All right, and then let's do this last one, a little bit trickier problem here. We have 14 pi over 9. All right, so when we look at 14 pi over 9, if you think about that, that's like 1 and 5 ninths pi, right? So as we think about it, as we go all the way around the circle, right, a full revolution around the circle here is 2 pi. So we're definitely not all the way around the circle, but we're definitely more than halfway. So the key part of this here is we need to think about the 5 ninths. Is 5 ninths is more than half. So as we're taking it here and we're drawing out, right? So when we go from here all the way around to this other side here, we've gone 9 ninths. So we need to take this and break this into, uh, we need to break this into ninths over here. So I'm going to take this here and do that. So we've got one, two, they may not be perfectly uh, the same size, but I'll do my best. All right, so it looks like there we've got nine. So we need to count over five ninths. And what you'll see here when we do that, I'm going to try to draw that here in a different color so you can see it, right? So we'll change this one to red. So we've gone 9 ninths, 10 ninths, 11, 12, 13, 14 ninths. Uh-oh. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's not a ninth there, right? We're not counting the y-axis. I didn't draw that one in there. So there we go. So we should be one past here. Remember, when, you're, when your denominator is odd, you do not count the y-axis there. I should have mentioned that beforehand. Okay, so we're all the way to there. So here is our initial side, and then this is our terminal side of our angle there. So it looks like we end up in quadrant number four. And then when we're asked here, hey, what's the reference angle? Okay, we gotta look at this one. We need to get all the way up here to where it is at you know, 2 pi, well, 2 pi would be like 18 ninths, right? 18 divided by 9 is 2. So if we've gone 14 ninths, how many do we have to go to get to 18 ninths? Well, we'd have to go 4 ninths more. So we're going to have to go 4 pi over 9 is going to be our reference angle. Okay, we don't do a lot of them that kind of look messy like that one there, um, but we will do some, so I want to make sure you're prepared. All right, let's go ahead here and move on. This is just a recap on angle conversions, uh, in case you were maybe absent yesterday when we talked about them. Remember, when we're changing from degrees to radians there, we want to use our conversion factor of multiplying times pi radians over 180 degrees. Right, this is like pi radians over 180 degrees. And when we're changing from radians to degrees, we want to multiply by 180 degrees over pi radians. So on the top here, 240 degrees, we're taking here, we want to convert it to radians. We're going to multiply this by pi radians over 180 degrees. Notice here that our units will cancel out, just like if you're doing a conversion in um, like chemistry or something like that. So we've got 240 over 180 pi. And then we can reduce this down. We're going to look at here, right? Cancel out the tens on the top and bottom. And then looks like we've got 6 goes into 24 four times, and it goes into 18 three times. So we're going to end up with 4 pi over 3. All right, let's look at 135 degrees. With that one, we're going to multiply the same thing. We're going to say times pi radians over 180 degrees. After we do that here, we have 135 over 180 and we've got our pi on there. 
So 135 and 180, right? Well, 45 goes into both of them there. 45 goes into 135 three times, and it goes into 180 four times. And you can use a calculator to help you with that part of it there if you need to. But we should end up here with 3 pi over 4. Let's look at changing ratings to degrees down here. We have 11 pi over 6. So now we're going to use our other conversion factor here, which would then be multiplying by 180 degrees over pi radians. When we do that here, our pi's are common factors on the top and the bottom. And then you'll see here 6 goes into 6 once and goes into 180 30 times. So now we just have 11 times 30, which should give us 330 degrees. And then we've got 3 pi over 5. We're going to take that one here and convert it doing the same thing. So 180 degrees over pi radians. We're going to cancel out our pi's. 5 goes into 5 once, goes into 180, whew, let's see there, I think that would be, I think 36 times, and then if we're going to do 3 times 36, I believe we should end up there with 108 degrees. So that's just a little quick recap on converting your uh, degrees to radians and radians to degrees. If you have questions about that, please make sure you ask in class. Okay, so the rest of what you'll see on here, I just have some practice for you converting from degrees to radians and radians to degrees. So if you are absent, please try those, and then you can uh, check with me in class. And then there's a couple practice problems at the end of this too. It says, one, finding the exact coordinates of point Q in the fourth quadrant if the cosine of theta is 6 sevenths. And then it's going to ask you to find your uh, reference angle, your angle of rotation, and then the other three corresponding angles. And then there's one other practice problem here. It says, um, talking about a rider on the screamer, okay, and it talks about their seat was located 36 horizontal feet from the center support pole, okay, and that the seats were located down in the murky pit. So one thing when you're working this one out here, remember that the radius of the screamer is 100 feet. So hopefully that'll help you. And I would totally advise you to draw a picture when you're doing this problem. If you wanna do it there, then you can work it out and check it with me in class and I'll let you know how you're doing or answer any questions you have. So this is our lesson for H7-5, day number two. Thanks for watching.